Risks to cybersecurity are growing across the world. Threats, which could come in the form of malware, ransomware, or even information campaigns, are increasing in sophistication, targeting governments, businesses, and individuals alike. Countries across the world want to combat such risks. The U.S., for example, unveiled its national cybersecurity strategy earlier this year as part of efforts to strengthen the country's ability to fend off threats. And it also includes boosting tech governance. The aim? To make tech companies more accountable for their actions while ensuring fair competition and enhancing privacy protections. For more insight into this, Anne Newberger joins us. She's Deputy National Security Advisor for Cyber and Emerging Technology for the National Security Council at the White House. Ms. Newberger is also a speaker at the Singapore International Cyber Week, currently held at the SANS Expo and Convention Center. Uh, firstly, I'd like to get your quick thoughts on the news of the day and what we're seeing in Israel and Gaza. President Biden is also set to arrive today. Are cyber campaigns playing a role in the conflict? First, it's really good to be here in Singapore, a global leader on cybersecurity. Uh, as you know, President Biden has stated that America stands with Israel uh, at this moment and that there is no justification for terrorism. With regard to cyber, we've seen some small level cyber attacks um, on different systems in Israel. And certainly we're working closely with the Israelis to ensure the cybersecurity and resilience of critical services um, that, to support the country at this time. Uh, and President Biden has vowed to tackle the digital domain with, quote, all instruments of national power. And he's called out China, Russia, Iran and North Korea specifically. Uh, who or what poses the greatest threat in cyberspace today? It's a really good question. Certainly we see nation state actors like the ones you mentioned causing threat. We believe the North Koreans have gleaned you know, close to $2 billion in funds used to evade sanctions and fund their missile program, for example, via cyber hacks of crypto infrastructure. So the threats that countries bring in cyberspace is a real one. I'll also note the threats of cyber crime, both the disruptive impact, disrupting companies, hospitals, schools around the world, as well as affecting vulnerable parts of our population is a real threat. So the economic cost is costing globally hundreds of billions of dollars and the disruptive cost in terms of the critical services that citizens around the world rely on. Well, election interference is an area of concern when it comes to cyber threats. The U.S. has experienced it. Uh, what are the main concerns for democracies looking to safeguard their elections? We could use Taiwan and their upcoming election as an example. Elections are truly the crown jewel of democracies, as you know. We look at two sets of threats. One are cybersecurity threats to election infrastructure, and the second are disinformation, conveying inaccurate information about, for example, polling sites, polling times, etc. So we work closely with democracies around the world to help ensure that election infrastructure can withstand those cybersecurity threats, it's certainly a priority, and I know it's a priority for democracies. Usually after an election, countries will get together, share what has been learned regarding new tactics and techniques, and what's important from a defensive perspective. From a disinformation perspective, certainly both educating our citizens to check what they see online, um, particularly related to election information. We are concerned about AI-driven disinformation, deep fakes, the scope and scale of what's possible. And that's one of the reasons that one of the voluntary commitments the United States has been working on with leading AI companies has been related to watermarking or marking content that's AI generated to help users distinguish between what is AI generated content, both in the context of everyday news uh, and certainly in the context of an election. Uh, President Biden's cybersecurity strategy covers not only defense, but also it discusses how offense in the digital space is critical to American national security. Uh, what is Washington's offensive strategy here? What sort of cyber attack capabilities are we talking about? So first, I think what's really important for your readers to know is that everything starts with defense. Fundamentally, um, one needs a combined defensive and offensive strategy, but using 
any offensive capabilities requires being able to really defend one's networks first. And that's really been the reason the strategy has put so much focus on securing critical services, pipeline, water, rail services, has put such a focus on calling on tech companies to improve the security of their products. I'll note the launch of a labeling regime for smart devices in the United States modeled after the one here in Singapore. Uh, we really appreciated learning from the experience in Singapore. And then to your question on the offensive side, the knowledge that attackers can use infrastructure around the world and to work with allies and partners around the world to, when necessary, disrupt or take down the infrastructure that may be conducting their attacks. For example, in the context of cybercrime, which is a significant issue around the world, disrupting both the infrastructure, disrupting the crypto infrastructure that moves illicit funds is a big area that's both part of our more disruptive approach and part of our work with international allies and partners. You mentioned AI, artificial intelligence earlier. I wonder if you could elaborate for us more about the threats that it poses to cybersecurity and also, does it also present opportunities? I love the way you put that. AI really does bring peril, but also promise in the area of cybersecurity. So because we tend to be hopeful in this arena, I'll start with the promise side. We see AI potentially helping us more rapidly find anomalous activity, that's the sign of a cyber attack, and block it. We see AI potentially help us both generate more secure code and find vulnerabilities in code and accelerate development of patches. Each of those three areas are key problems and challenges in cybersecurity today. So we see AI potentially being very helpful in this space and have launched efforts like uh, the Department of Defense's DARPA AI Cyber Challenge, which seeks to bring together defensive hackers from around the world so that defensive use of AI to combat uh, cyber attacks and cyber crime is one step ahead um, of offensive activity. And then related to the peril, certainly the flip side of that <clears throat> is the concern that AI could be used to more rapidly find vulnerabilities in code, generate malicious software more rapidly, and then generate more targeted cyber attacks and potential multi-step cyber attacks. So our work now is to ensure that we use AI for defense and we're carefully looking to see the ways AI could be used for offense and working to be one step ahead from a defensive perspective. As you said earlier, the Biden administration has been working to secure uh, infrastructure, banks, utilities, hospitals uh, against cyber attacks. But what have you found to be the biggest hurdle in getting companies in these critical sectors to strengthen their cybersecurity? Is cost a factor? So I, it's a really good question. The first piece starts with encouraging companies who are building tech to build more secure technology. And I think all of us, government and private sector purchasers of technology, need a way to know what is secure. And that's the reason we've put a focus on, I mentioned the Internet of Things labeling effort, to help bridge companies producing tech and consumers for home, schools, and offices who want to buy more secure tech. So there's a really easy way to know if a given piece of technology meets a government standard. The second piece related to that is sharing threat information when we find it. I think the third is really the international partnership. <clears throat> and indeed, the partnership that we've built with 49 countries around the world to counter cybercrime is a good example of where bringing countries together, tightening the partnership between countries and the private sector to share information, to take down um, disruptive activity that occurs is a big part of the strategy as well. Well, thank you very much for speaking with us today and for your time. Anne Newberger, the Deputy National Security Advisor for Cyber and Emerging Technology of the U.S. National Security Council.